Hey, 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 how is it going again, Guardians? LV Native here with another Destiny video for you. Well, as most of you know, Bungie just launched at 10 a.m. today their live stream event showcasing Destiny 2, showing us the first footage and answering a ton of questions that we all have. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and take a real quick look at the feature comment of the day. And today's comment comes to us from Hunkavision, and he says, I should be the feature comment of the day because I spend my lunch break watching your videos. Well, I appreciate that, man, but make sure you eat, all right? It's very important. And remember, guys, if you would like to be the feature comment of the day, all you gotta do, smack that like button, drop a comment in the section below, and I just might pick yours to be the very next featured comment of the day. So there is a ton of stuff to go over, guys. We're gonna jump right into it. I'm only gonna briefly go over, you know, a lot of the main points that they were going, because if I tried to discuss everything they talked about, this would go on forever. So we're just gonna touch on all the main points. They started things off by saying there are three main goals for Destiny 2 to make it, you know, a complete and worthy sequel, completely separate from Destiny 1, was number one, they wanted to make a world that pulls you in, which always gives you a reason to explore, find new things, and always entertains you and gives you something to do. On that, that's their number two point, is they want you to have amazing things to do. Um, whether you're a solo player, whether you're someone who always groups, whether you're in a clan, whether you know, you're someone who's hardcore and always wants to be you know, the absolute best KD or whatever in, in Trials. It's got something for everyone, according to them, and they always want you to have something to do so you're never bored. Hopefully this means we'll have very few, if any, of those bad downward, you know, dry spells that last for months on end before we get new content. So I'm really looking forward to that. Hopefully they can deliver on that message. Their third main goal was they always want you to have someone to play with. Now they released a statistic that was actually really disturbing, and that half roughly half of the players that have made it to max light have never once experienced a raid which you know by many people's opinion is some of the absolute best and unique content that destiny has to offer they want to change that so they're going to give you ways for everybody to be able to do more activities whether it's trials raids nightfalls any of these you're going to be able to find ways to get in and play so the campaign is one thing that they focused on a lot and it is going to be called the Red War Campaign. And this is primarily going to be the main story plot driving the missions. And our main goal here, of course, we need to regain our connection to the Traveler. So apparently the Traveler is not completely dead like some people have thought. Um, it's to help regain that connection, get our abilities back, and also discover new abilities along the way. I think most of us can agree that the storytelling in Destiny 1, especially vanilla Destiny, was absolutely horrible. It was scattered and patchwork at best, left a lot of things unanswered. Destiny 2 plans to fix that with continuing the direction that they started to do with The Taken King and The Rise of Iron, where they start actually putting cinematics in the missions, and it made the missions feel much more important, like there was actually a reason to go through and do what it is that you were doing. So that's one thing that they wanted to, you know, make sure that they were focusing on. We are going to have brand new worlds to explore, mainly uh, Nessus, Titan, IO and Earth, and an Earth is going to be the European Dead Zone rather than the Cosmodrome that we've been used to. So it will still be a new area for us to explore. There may be more. We might have old ones we get to visit. I'm not sure. But these are four definite new locations that they have told us we will all be going in to greatly, greatly dump a large portion of hours of our lives into to explore these fantastically new built worlds. So let's see here. Uh, one interesting fact is with our weapons, we are no longer going to have a primary, a secondary, and a heavy weapon slot. Instead, these are going to be replaced with a kinetic weapon slot, an energy weapon slot, and a power weapon slot. So they gave us an example of what some of the power weapons are going to be, and it's going to be things like fusion rifles, sniper rifles, you know, grenade launchers, if I had to guess, probably, you know, rocket launchers, heavy machine guns probably fall into that category as well. Now, what they did say, they very, very lightly uh, spoke about it, but your kinetic weapon and your energy weapon, they said that it could be the same weapons, which leads me to believe that if you want, you're going to have your kinetic weapon, your energy weapon could be the same weapon, but with some sort of elemental burn on it. So maybe you want to have a 
you know, sniper rifle, oh no, excuse me, not a sniper rifle, because that would be a power weapon, but say you wanted to have a hand cannon and an auto rifle out at the same time, you could, uh, I guess, potentially put one in the kinetic weapon slot and one in the energy weapon slot. So you have more choices, you're not, you know, sidelined to just using specific weapons, and this could make for some really interesting loadout combinations, and I can't wait to explore this. Let's see, we are going to have a new subclasses. They have been confirmed, guys, and it looks like these are going to be the ones that we all get to start out with. So, starting things off with the Warlocks, you are going to have the Dawnblade. Now, this obviously looks like a solar-based class, but it's one where you get a sword, you get to, you know, sprout, you know, sprout some wings and fly in the air, and while you're in the air, you can just be chucking these flaming, hurling projectiles down at people. Picture your Hammer Titans, but able to fly around and just chuck everything from the air. This looks like a really, really cool, fun uh, subclass, guys. Moving on next, Titans, you are going to get to have the Sentinel class. Now, this one looks to be a Void-based, you know, protection, kind of like a Defender class, but with a little bit of offensive ca uh, capabilities as well. So, it, you still have, like, defensive shields and barriers, it looks like you can put up, but at the same time, you'll also be able to, like, charge forward, and you'll be able to hurl your shield as a projectile weapon and bounce it off everyone's heads. That part looks really cool as well. So now, if you use this class, you're not stuck to just inside your bubble and not able to kill anything. You got a little offense and a little defense with the Sentinel class. Now, for the Hunters, my OG, it's what I am going to be first in Destiny 2. I'm keeping tradition. I'm not saying I'm always going to main a Hunter in D2, but I am going to start as a Hunter in Destiny 2. So, we are going to have access to the Arc Strider. Now, the Arc Strider looks really similar to a Blade Dancer, but a little bit more nimble and agile. So, you pull out this gigantic staff uh, and end up doing acrobatic cartwheels and, you know, kicks and strikes with it. It looks like you would be incredibly difficult to hit while you're going around slashing in that. So that looks pretty cool as well, but it looks a whole lot similar to the Arc Blade. But, you know, that's fine because I love the Arc Blade subclass. Anyway, I'm sure there's a couple more nuances to it and it's going to be a little bit different. I don't think it's just something that acts and feels and looks like Arc Blade, just under a different name. So we'll have to wait for more information on all three of these subclasses to get a better idea. You can bet when that comes out, I'll definitely have videos on it. So of course with a brand new game, you know, we're going to have new story missions, but we're also going to have all brand new strikes. Uh, we know the name of one of the strikes, and it's going to be called the Inverted Spire Strike. Now this is something that all the Destiny guys that got to go to this event are all going to be able to go get to play as part of the you know, promotion. They're going to get a little PvP and a little PvE action. They're going to get one or two stories in there, and they also said they're going to let them play this strike. Uh, speaking of the PvP, interesting note here, they did mention that all Crucible modes are going to be now 4v4 exclusively. So, no longer it looks like are we going to have some game modes that are 3v3, others are 6v6. We're just going to have 4v4 for everything. So that's going to be pretty interesting as well. I know a lot of the competitive co uh, community wanted 4v4 as opposed to 3v3, you know, for a main competitive scene, and it looks like that's the direction that Bungie and Activision are going to be taking. One last note with the Crucible, as far as the information, we are going to have new game modes, and we know the name of one of them is going to be called Countdown. Now, they just mentioned it, but we didn't really get a whole lot of information about it, so we'll have to wait for more details on that, but it is uh, confirmed we are going to have a mode called Countdown as one of our Crucible modes that we'll be able to play with in Destiny 2. And as you would expect, of course, there is going to be a new raid. They teased us, made us act like they were going to show us part of it, and he goes, yeah, no, I'm not. So, <laughs> yeah, we didn't think they were going to show off the new raid today. We just assumed they would mention it. And that's really uh, all they did for that. So, one thing that's cool is we will now, guys, this is so, so awesome, and I was really hyped when I first heard this, is no longer are we going to have to go to orbit and go to another place. Go back to orbit, go back to this place. We will be able to launch any new activity that we want to do from where we currently are. So if you're down doing patrols, you know, an IO or something, and for whatever reason, now you want to go and do a strike over on Titan. You know, I'm just throwing these out there. I don't even know if Titan's going to have strikes, but I'm assume, you know, assuming it will. Um, you won't have to go to orbit to do it. You can just launch it right from some, you know, map that they have in game while you're down on the planet. It should really cut down on the time in between engagements. I think that they said something along the lines of we want to minimize the time it takes for you to get your gun to someone's face. And I couldn't agree more, guys. 
And speaking of things to do on the planet, um, they are going to have a lot of stuff other than just patrols. Now, they are going to have patrols. They're also going to be having the public events that we're used to, but they're going to be a little bit more coordinated and actually have special objectives that can be completed during these to get extra rewards. That's going to be pretty cool. Um, they're going to have something called treasure maps, which is exactly what it sounds like. You actually have to follow this map and set of clues, and at the end it leads you to the giant boss. You kill the boss and you get some awesome loot. That ought to be really fun too. Plus, we're going to have something called lost sectors. Now, I don't know if these are like little mini missions that we have to complete to unlock certain certain parts of the patrollable area. I'm not sure. It's just something new that they said we're going to have. And another thing that they actually mentioned this quite a bit is going to be called adventures. Now, my take is what I think the adventures are going to be are going to be somewhere along the lines of what our quests are now that we pick up from the tower and stuff. You know, so rather than going to see, you know, Cade 6 and get a mission and then go down to Venus and do it or whatever, we are just going to find him, talk to him, he'll give us the adventure while we're down on that planet, and we'll just go get it done. We don't have to travel anywhere else to do it. So that's what I think the adventure is going to be like. I could be way off, but I think that from everything that they said, that's kind of what it sounds like. So we'll just have to wait and see how close to accurate that one actually is. Now I mentioned the public events before, that uh, they are going to be bringing those back, of course. One thing that they want to take out is the randomness of how hard it is for you to find. No longer, if you're wanting to, you know, farm public events, it looks like you're not going to have to go to an outside, you know, third-party website for them to give you a guess of when they think, you know, certain public events are going to spawn. There is going to be a map, you know, in-game that you can look at that will show you the location and the exact time that that next event is going to take place. So you can plan accordingly. No longer do you have to go to one area and wait 15 minutes hoping that public event is going to spawn. Again, quicker time to get the gun to the face. I love this philosophy and that is going to take so much of the headache out of doing farming and getting around from place to place. One, the fact that they're going to be marked on our map easy for us to get to. And two, that we'll be able to travel right to these locations to do different activities without having to go back into orbit in between. This is going to be a great quality of life improvement and I think it is one that is desperately needed for Destiny. So going back to the new worlds that we're going to be exploring, um, one I told you on Earth it will be in the European Dead Zone. Uh, we're going to be exploring uh, Titan, which is one of the moons of Saturn. That was a place that a lot of people were thinking was going to be a thing. And uh, that one has no landmass, apparently. It looks like it's like all a giant ocean. So that's going to be kind of cool. Um, we have the Nessus. And Nessus is actually going to have one of our favorite characters, Cade Six. Because what it looks like is at the very beginning of the game, after everyone scatters and goes their own separate ways after the attack, you know, when we lose everything, we have to kind of go hunt down all these people and unite and bring everyone back together. And it looks like they said Nessus uh, is going to have be where Cade Six is hanging out. So that's going to be a spot that we're going to have to go if we want to make sure we hook up with him early. I don't know how that's going to work. I just know that that's the planet he's going to be on. Now they also have Io, and what Io is, is one of the moons of Jupiter. And this one, it looks like it is very, very close to heart with Ikora. So I have a feeling that's where we're going to have to go to get, you know, any missions and stuff from her. Um, other than that, they didn't really touch on too much other things as far as the worlds, only letting you know that they're going to be vastly larger and much more to explore and do while you're actually down on these planets. And anything like that sounds like an amazing, amazing improvement into what this game is and what we know and love to do. One really big part of the game is they are now going to be bringing clans into Destiny. And more so than just a little clan tag that's underneath your name and that's it and there's nothing really else special about it. They are going to be making it very easy for people to be able to search, find, join clans, do everything clan related in the game itself without having to use third party websites and apps. This is amazing. It's going to give ways for people to find new clans, to be able to get part of a group and enjoy this game with a new host of friends. Also, they're going to be using these clan systems to help do matchmaking for you know people who are wanting to do those tougher activities. Like I mentioned before, if you want to do the raid, you can actually search for a clan that's doing that raid that might just need one more person, and you can be linked up with them and then go and get that done. Who knows? Maybe you enjoy it and you end up friending a few of them and possibly even joining their clan. So this is going to be a great way for people to connect all around the world in Destiny, and I think it's well overdue. I've been saying this for a while, that clans need to be brought more. You know, there needs to be a reason for you to have a clan and a group with these guys, other than it just being a lot of fun. They're also going to be giving us clan rewards. Now this is 
awesome idea. So regardless of, you know, who you are, how much you play, you know, in a particular week or month or whatever these rewards are going to be, is anytime you do anything in the game, it's going to help advance your clan as a whole to get these rewards. Now, whether you participated, you know, barely at all, but maybe you have a bunch of hardcore players who've done everything, you will still get these clan rewards regardless of how much you actually participated, it looks like. And that's pretty cool. So guys that can only play a little bit, maybe an hour or two a day or only a couple days a week, you are still going to be able to get awesome rewards with your clan. So it's going to give you more incentives to join a clan and to actually play together and tackle all these activities as a group instead of just trying to be a solo player. That being said, there's nothing wrong with being a solo player. Hell, I did it for about the first nine months of Destiny, and I never once grouped with anyone. That being said, I started to have a whole lot more fun with the game as soon as I joined a clan and started regularly playing with groups of people. And that's one thing that they believe. They want to just give that access to more and more people and make it easier for everybody to enjoy all the content that apparently Destiny 2 is going to have to offer. One quick note, they did of course mention and confirm what we all already knew, that Destiny 2 is coming to PC. What we didn't know, and I don't think anyone saw this coming, is they've decided to pair Bungie has, Bungie and Activision, for the uh, PC port of Destiny 2 only with Battle.net. That's uh, run by Blizzard, so they are actually pairing up with Blizzard, and it looks like Destiny 2 will only be able to be able to be played on the PC exclusively on Battle.net through Blizzard. Now, at first this sounds weird, but at second time it seems kind of smart. The reason I say this is Blizzard has a very long history of, you know, gigantic online-only games and, uh, you know, MMOs and stuff like that. So they have a lot of experience in bringing a game into this type of platform. And because of that, um, you know, I don't know how well, Bungie and Activision felt that they could have handled the online port themselves, so bringing in someone who's very versed in this, I don't think, you know, is a bad thing at all. It can only lead to greater and bigger things as a whole, not just, I think, for the PC, but this is going to be so great for the community, not that it's Blizzard that's running, but the fact that we're bringing in an entire new generation and style of players that'll be able to play on the PC now. Up till now, if you've only heard about Destiny if you were a PC player, you know, you probably watch videos and talk to your friends and whatever, but now PC players are going to be able to get their hands on Destiny, you know, through Destiny 2, and it's going to just bring a whole lot more people to this already fantastic community. It's going to get bigger. It's going to be better. I cannot wait until summer is already over. September 8th is here, and I can start losing every single waking minute of my life to this game. So, are you guys as excited as I am? Because I can barely contain myself right now. I'm trying to keep my emotions in check while I'm doing this audio recording, but I am super pumped. I'm all aboard the hype train after watching that. I hope you guys are as well. So, that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. Like I said, I don't want to cover everything that I did because it would just take forever. And this one has already ran on long as it is. If you made it all the way to this point, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate your support. Or maybe you don't care as my support. You're just excited want to hear people talk about Destiny 2. Either way, thank you for being a part of this video. But that's going to do it, guys. Remember, if you like this uh, video, go ahead and smack that like button, drop a comment in the section below, and most importantly, share this information with your friends. I know there's a lot of people out there right now that haven't been playing Destiny for a while but are a little curious about Destiny 2. Make sure you send this video to them. Give them a heads up. Let them know what's coming because the future looks freaking bright, people. And if this is your first time to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn that little notification bell on so you know anytime I put out great content like this in the future. But as always, Guardians, this is LV Native. You guys are awesome, and I will see you in the next one.